Two this morning. I always get two. Start the day off with two. Uh -huh. Venti, uh, the TikTok drinks like the white mocha <laughs> with sweet cream. Oh, God, the basic, so yeah. basic. My yeah. coffee lover heart uh, hurts when yeah. I hear it, but I'm, I love when people get into coffee. But no, I had three cups of coffee yesterday, and I could have been categorized as a sociopath. Yeah. I was like, I did every single chore in the house, and. Brendan cleaned today, so wow. this apartment is spotless. It's truly spotless. Yep. Don't go into my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> There's boxes everywhere. Oh, we're well, um, moving, so yeah. I mean, it's understandable. Um, Hello, everyone. Welcome to Taco Classic Movies. We're back. <laughs> it's so good to be back. Uh, today is going to be very exciting because I picked the movie today I'm that so Ryan is going to watch. Um, oh. And then Ryan pick the taco place for today. I mean, yes. you picked it last week, but... No, I I was say, I just wanted to hit all the taco places that <laughs> are near my apartment because I'm like, I want to go far. <laughs> um, but you, are, you, you please choose the taco place uh, for the next episode because I want to experience all the ones around your place or that you want to go to as well. Alright, I got you. I just got to give a shout out to this place because this is where I wanted, I wanted to go here for episode one but the issue was that they were closed on Tuesdays. And we reported this uh, on the we, yeah, we recorded the first episode on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, so, I've heard of this film, and it's multitude of sequels. Yes. I have never seen any of them, and I only have a rough understanding. So, everybody, the film that I have chosen for us today, a classic, a near and dear to my heart, one that I quote all the time, and it is the only moment of pure genuine happiness i feel it is bring it on ladies oh and gentlemen we are bringing it we are, we are bringing it on it is so broad and i had half a mind to make ryan sit and watch the original og and then all of the sequels but we didn't have time. even the one with hayden panettiere we don't have time well, i do like hayden panettiere we don't have time for all those films and i'm looking right now on the stars app at all these. <laughs> yeah, films. they, I'm gonna There's be honest like with you. List. There's a whole list here of Bring It On. Bring It On again. Bring It On in it to, to win, win it. it. Bring, bring It On, on all, all or nothing. nothing. Bring, bring It On. on. Right to the finish. Yep. Uh, I, I think guess that's it. Yeah, that's it. That, that, <laughs> that's all. It feels like there's more than uh, what there actually is. Yeah, well, it looks like they came out like every three years. So it is always in like the collective consciousness of people's minds that there was always a bring it on around the corner by sneaking up by to, by to dance into your hearts because that's about all I know about these um, films is that I thought they were I think they're dance films but I, I also could they could be like like a dance team or I, I, or I'm getting cheerleader vibes as okay. well because of the uniforms or less dance team more cheerleader okay and then uh, but it could be that i'm getting lost in all the sequels and that the sequels could be leaning more in cheerleader vibes than in dance team vibes yeah so ignore the sequels let's just focus on bringing it on the the 2000. one 2000 og bring it on you were four when this came out shut up i was not four i was five when it came out okay yes because it's 2021 and i have math I, um, if the pandemic has taught us anything, Ryan has gotten dumb. No. Your words, they bounce off me. They mean nothing. I'm just kidding. It's okay. I, I have learned. I've, I've learned more about myself than I have about things around me. Yeah. Um, I got you. Okay. So focusing on the first Bring It On, yeah. you see the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I was able in the last episode to see at least the B-movie poster. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think the setting is? What's your uh, hypothesis so on what's going to happen? They so? look like high schoolers. Okay. But they very well could be college students. Like so, and I'm so I'm my my rough imagining of what I think this film is is that there is a 
girl that is down on her luck. And okay. she's either moved to a town or to a school, and she's a new kid. And she's trying to fit in, in or she's trying to get out there, or her family tells her that she needs to get out there and socialize. And she was a dancer at her home, old town, or a cheerleader at her old in her old city. And she's like, well, I'm going to try out for the cheerleading or the dance team. And the problem is, is that, oh, the dance team are real assholes. <laughs> they are real jerks. <laughs> like or all real, classic. Yeah, like classic. This is 2000, so I'm imagining there's just multitude of layers of trope. There's so yes. much trope that there's you're not going to be able to get through it all. And she's going to get on the team. It's literally, I think, I think Pitch Perfect stole their plot from Bring It On. You could be right. I mean, you'll that, find in out. In the sense that she is uh, like the leader or the, the lead character. She joins the team. She's good, and that makes the other girls jealous. But then through the power of practice for some sort of regionals, tournament, some would say. Okay. They learn to get along and look past each other different. It's a sort of, we're not so different, you and I kind of feeling. Yeah. And then, then uh, there's an issue, something like someone gets hurt. Maybe someone breaks a leg, or mm-hmm. they, or they, uh, someone dies. Maybe someone dies and breaks. Oh my god, this is this is and, drastic. Okay, and, but I'm, I'm digging. And, and, and then they have to like, they have to like place her, or they have to like come up with a new routine and, in her memoriam, and they call the routine by her name, and they 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 only have a week before this regional tournament. And they come together. Oh, also, there's this B plot where she meets a cute guy. Okay. Because uh, it's two thousands. Yes. And uh, and sadly, we can't have. Are any of these bring it on? Uh, are there any uh, gay relationships in any of these bring it on? Actually, to be honest with you. Do you get the energy from all of them? You. You feel the vibes. I, I'm trying to remember because it's actually been a while since I've I've watched Bring It On, and to be honest with you, I watched Bring It On. I watched Bring It On again once, didn't watch it again. Oh, well. Uh, then I watched Bring It On All or Nothing, and it was very cheesy for a film that came out in 2006. And then, so Bring It On, I feel like you, there is the possibility that as a female, you would definitely fall in love mm-hmm. with certain characters in this film. Let me but ask you I this. don't know, I can't, to be honest with you, I cannot remember if there's an actual, like, um, Were there any awakenings from this film? Oh, hand, yes. Hands, okay, hands yeah. out. So like, For this, sure. And I always feel like in movies like this, there's always a character where you're like, why didn't they just make... If this was, a, if this was made in a different time, she just would have been gay. So here's the deal. It's 2000. Yeah. Um, 21 years ago, so... LGBT, uh, I guess, m- f- films, television, like there wasn't a lot of it. Uh, one of my favorite things is there's actually a character or an actress in Bring It On um, who is in the beloved Buffy the Vampire Slayer. My favorite, hands Wait. down. Oh, Loved really? it. You're going to watch it. That's the only spoiler that I'll give you. Okay, that's um, awesome. But that's like here, um, for an example, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is the biggest spoiler. So um, if you have not seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which Y'all should, because it came out in the late 90s, we, early 2000s. We, we had the time to do TV shows on Buffy. I've, God. Never, I've only seen parts of Buffy. I've never seen all of Buffy. But I appreciate Buffy the Josh Vampire Slayer? Whedon, Josh yes. Whedon. Josh I appreci- Whedon. I appreciate um, all the careers that series started. Yeah. And also, just like, when that show came out, it came out and like was so good with like a amazing female lead. Where yeah. it was like just an amazing lead that was also a girl that was not... An amazing female lead in the sense that like we like needed a a like a lead uh yeah well the my idea favorite of, like a lead girl instead it's like just a great character that is also yeah. a girl not to sidetrack too much but the one of the concepts that i really loved about buffy the vampire slayer was the fact that you have this like tiny super skinny blonde protagonist which when you look at her first glance you're like oh god why is she not bring it on why is she not bring it on and then you just find out how much of a badass she is mm-hmm. but like the importance to reference that to like a film like this if we were going to talk about it is like Tara and Willow iconic mm-hmm. like one of the few lesbian romances that are seen on TV and then mm-hmm. for people who have watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer you see how it ends and it's sad mm-hmm. but this was just 
two thousand. It's it's a time where it's not really you're happening. Gonna, you're gonna feel so it. <laughs> you could potentially like watching this film, you can get certain vibes, but it, it was more of an awakening for things and people like myself than it was to actually see anything shown on screen. All right, fair enough. I was just curious because like two thousand two thousand is so long ago that I'm just prepared for like a being washed with stereotypes. Stuff that I, I'm sure there's gonna be several times where I'm going to turn to you and be and say this this doesn't this wouldn't fly. Yeah. Oh, and it, it's gonna be funny because it's gonna be interesting to watch a, a film that came out again in 2000 and then here we are now in 2021 and you're gonna analyze it and you're gonna be like what the heck. It's 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 wonderful to be able to look back at things that were it really okay is and be like I, I feel glad to be aware now. Yeah, I feel like another thing is, too, is looking back on films like this and see what they can get away with. And then at the time, it could have been something that's like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that on film. And then now you look at film and TV today and you're like, well, that's literally nothing compared to now. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm really excited for you to watch this movie. Yeah, I am so curious because they've made so many of these. So that tells me that the first one... It's really good. And when I, so I asked my roommate, I said, oh, we're going to watch Bring It On for the podcast. And yeah. he's like, oh, that's a great film. The original one is a, is a good movie. Yeah. And that tells me that all these other films just piggyback off of a great film. So I'm looking forward to it because I, I, I think it's going to be a good film. PG-13, so we're not going to get anything saucy. No. Uh, not too saucy, no. Not too, it, wait, 2000 saucy. <laughs> I think they got away with a lot more. And then they were like, wait, we can't make things like this PG-13 anymore? Actually, I, I kind of feel like it's reversed. I oh, feel like they've pushed the, I feel like they've pushed the boundaries more. True. They are allowing, I think, wasn't it one F word in a PG-13? It was something like that. Yeah. And then now you see on, like, television, like, the F word wasn't used at all. And then, like, American Horror Story said F this, and then mm-hmm. they decided to throw it in there. But yeah, I don't know if it's just because we're in a society where things are more desensitized now. Yeah. Or... Well, it's it's like this... I was reading about when you mix water and fire and then put an electrical current in it, it creates yeah. an explosion. Yeah. And that's how I feel like where we have like this intense wokeness and then this intense disassociation with everything that we just get these explosions like, I can't feel at all. I have no... Yeah. Oh, I have no... Like, I can't feel anything towards anything anymore, and it's so frustrating because it's like a bunch of sides sometimes are just hitting each other. So, I that's actually an interesting point, and I'm curious to see if anybody else feels that, but I feel like the older you get, the more just like weirdly disconnected you get from things. You pick the three things you care about, and then everything else kind of just gets brushed off. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I'm curious to see if anybody else goes through that in their life where it's just like, when I was a kid, I had so many aspirations. I mean, everyone wanted to be a freaking race car driver and then now look at you and you're an accountant not saying anything bad about accountants <laughs> but i'm just saying like you just you disconnect from they like passion <laughs> they really do in the long run <laughs> account oh, man yeah i have a friend who's that. an accountant and he does quite all right i yeah <laughs> and i tip my hat to him <laughs> yeah um but that's one of the things i'm excited for too especially as we're like diving into these different movies is as we're watching them B movie came out in 2007, we said? 2007, yeah. So 2007. We're going, we're going to so, the clock back a bit. Yeah, so it's like we started at 2007, now we're going to 2000. Who knows what the next movie is, but it's going to be very interesting going through this time this time capsule and seeing like how different movies, whether it's essentially children's movies or movies geared towards children or even like normal, everyday like adult movies. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this before we go... Before we go to our taco place, does is bring it on funny at all, or does it take itself very seriously? Oh no, it's funny. Oh, okay. it 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 falls into stereotypes, and I will even say like certain tropes, but it it'll tackle, I think, to what some people think is very serious, like this culture, mm-hmm. and then there are just gonna be moments where you're like, this is absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, I think it has a nice balance between the two. Well, I'm excited to watch this. Yes. Yeah, I'm excited to try this out. So now we're going to talk about Taco Place. The Taco Place that I chose is very close to where I live. It is 
one of the reasons why I was so stoked to, to live in my apartment in Chicago, it is El Patron. Uh, it is a it is a delicious taco place that is on 3749 West Fulton Avenue in Chicago, obviously. And it's just got delicious. I have, I have, not, I have yet to find one thing that isn't delicious there, because okay. everything is butchered in-house and always fresh. And they make all of their own sauces in-house, of course, and they have, their, their, their guacamole is topped with dried cranberries, and I, was, I just thought that was such a wild thing, I'd never seen that with guacamole before. Mm -hmm. They have this wonderful local family-owned energy to them, okay. and the, set, the moment I walked in, sometimes you can go to a place and you can feel like, well, truthfully, especially as a white person, <laughs> you, can, you can go to a place and you're like, oh, I don't want to offend or to be awkward, but they're very quickly to under, they're very quickly to follow and like understand and like uh, very kind, very helpful and like to help me find what I want to get and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things I like too, you had mentioned it when you pulled up the menu and you're like, the menu is very long. And then so I'm like scrolling through and seeing everything. So I like, I always like when there's options mm -hmm. to any food place you go to. Although we all know at this point, I'm the world's pickiest eater, which I would like to say I ordered different things this time. Mm -hmm. Still in the taco house. Yeah, still within the taco wheelhouse. But we, we did decide to take a crack at breaking those picky eating. Eatings. Yeah. So he really did. So I, I love these tacos very much. Yeah, I actually really like the selection that I had. Mm -hmm. And and I think that now I usually only get carne asada with with at this place, but honestly, tonight the carne asada was the weakest of the three tacos that I had. It actually genuinely was. So you and I, we got the same tacos. Yeah. The only difference was that my carne asada had avocado. Yeah. Because that's again, my shtick. And I am not an avocado person. Uh, first, I want to dive in to just overall taco between like tortilla and meat and just everything. Like it was well balanced. Also, they were filling, like the tacos were filled, mm -hmm. but they weren't like you weren't like picking up pieces of like the taco to eat. Like I could keep everything in the shell. Yeah, they were not. They were not overflowing. They were well balanced. Yeah. So that was nice because uh, if you're a messy eater, I, I think you'll like this the the tacos that we had. We got six tacos and I got extra stuff on mine for twenty one dollars. Yeah. That is that in, is genuinely a steal. In Chicago taco standards, that is a steal. And everyone there is super nice. Because this was close to my apartment, it was a short walk for us. But yeah. we were able to get over there and they had it all ready for us and they were really nice. And it took, it took about 15, 20 minutes, I think, after ordering to get the food. But everything was fresh. Everything was delicious. Yeah, because I was going to say, everything was still, like, super hot by mm -hmm. the time we got it. They have, like, one of those awesome, like, like cases that they keep things, that you keep things nice and hot. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, and the thing that I really like about this taco place, especially with uh, COVID being as awful as it still is, is being able to just walk up to a pickup window. So you don't even have to step foot into the building. You can order your food, there's a pickup window, everything is nice and socially distanced. So if you're worried about venturing out and getting food, um, but you don't wanna pay delivery fees and everything, or spend the money on things like an Uber Eats pass, mm -hmm. this was a nice option. I do wanna say, after the last episode of making so many jokes about how much I hate chorizo, this was the first time I had something with chorizo in it where I was just like, oh, oh my God, I'm eating chorizo again. The way that they spiced it was phenomenal. And it was, it was actually like spicy. Like I, you had to get me water. Yes, I did. It was, <laughs> it was, it had a great amount of spice to it, but it was a uh, surprising amount of spice. Cause I've had chorizo before at many different places, but it almost is very, it was, it did not have like as much of a spice as this one did. And I really enjoy that. The al pastor, was so sweet. So sweet. It was, it was so sweet that I, it was almost, it was not dessert-like, but it was so much more surprising than I was expecting. It kind of was this like weird feeling of like almost eating barbecue, but it's not. So I don't know. I like that. That was different. And yes, it was a nice transition from what I usually get. Huh. Um, 
But the thing I like about the Al Pastor tacos that we tried was the caramelized onions. Yes. And I liked how well those were balanced God. in. Everything was so with well the pork. balanced. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think if there's a spot, if we're going to do yay or nay and then our stars, mm-hmm. this is definitely a yay. And to be honest with you, from picking it up uh, and the ordering, the ordering was easy. So... Mm-hmm. The only downfall with this place that people should know is it is cash only right now. It is now. cash only. Yes. So please do not try walking in there with a debit card expecting to get your yeah, food. Yeah. I've been there. I've been there throughout the time that I've lived in the city. And there were periods where they did have a card reader, but it is not something that they tend to lean towards. It is something yeah. that they only do cash only mostly, mostly. And that could have something to do with, you know, just... Being on ground level, being in the city, just for safety reasons. Uh, sometimes or... I think it's also business too, because when you invest in things like the square and stuff, you do pay mm-hmm. for the fee well, to be able to access like things like the square. And, lot, and there aren't a lot of like close banks, and a lot of people don't get paid yeah. in uh, with checking accounts. A lot of people hold uh, keep their money to themselves, so paying in cash only I think helps a lot of people as well, because for that nature. And no, I would give it. Well, I mean. I'm biased with this place because I was so excited that, to have some tacos from here. So it's a yay, and it's it's five out of five. Yeah, really. I would I would say it's definitely a yay for me. I'm gonna give it a four point nine only because of the whole cash factor to it, especially with the fact that like now it's super important to always stay sanitized mm-hmm. and to always like limit how much cash you're handling because you don't know where cash is coming from. That is a big thing. Um, I tried I tried to not have any cash or keep cash to a a low to no me middle. My ground. mom used to lecture me because I'm awful carrying cash. So my folks was... always said like you don't know where those dollars have been, and I'm like, where do you think those dollars <laughs> have been? Because there's always that joke where it's like that stripper could have been in a like that dollar could have been in a stripper's g string, and I'm like, then why are you using it to buy so, candy bars? <laughs> so yeah, because the funny thing about that is I used to I used to work at that movie theater, mm-hmm. and I remember one time I was working in the box office and this lady gave me all of the cash that was out of her bra and I was like oh oh thank you um, <coughs> here are your tickets oh and then I washed I washed my hands for a while so yeah you don't really ever know where cash is coming from hard pass yeah oh. Um, okay, so let's transition into this movie. So oh, I just want to say oh that um, my God. <laughs> literally, bring it on, <laughs> brought it from beginning to end. I was enthralled with this. I I I, I, I enjoyed it, but I, my brain went to hot garbage because it was like a three a.m. Taco Bell run. It was like I it's it's garbage, but it's garbage I want to put in my body. Acting horrible. Horrible. God awful. Plot, pretty basic. Pretty, but you know what? Like, like I said, it was interesting because you you see this movie like it, we, we talked about it was made in the two thousands, and you see how it plays into stereotypes that also tackles very like important issues to like certain groups. Yeah, this movie had a lot of for a two thousands film. There was a lot of semi progress. I wanted to say almost. Like, it was it was this close to being progressive, and then it would, like, be like, oh, 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 no, I'm not ready for it yet. Yeah, because you, it was funny, too, like, certain lines in the film, you're just like, what? Like, uh, when the one male cheerle- cheerle- cheerleader. Oh, my God, I was livid, Rachel. I was like, how could that just get brushed under the rug. And we don't touch that guy's character again. <laughs> that boy. Um, yeah, so the biggest thing now, especially with, like, Harvey Weinstein and everything. Oh, yeah. Sexual assault is such a big topic. Everyone's getting called out on their shit like they should. Absolutely. Well, like, this movie came out, and one thing that, like, when I watched this as a kid, didn't understand what was going on, but one of the male cheerleaders was talking about how one of the female cheerleaders never wears underwear. So uh-huh. he's like, sometimes so when like, he... He's like, sometimes when he lifts her up into the air, uh, he slips a couple digits if you're uh, picking up what we're throwing down. And so... And I was like, and we don't touch on that again? It's played off for laughs? It's played off for laughs. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, so I think it was funny watching your reactions for that. And then my favorite, my absolute favorite favorite 
reaction of Ryan's is we're watching this film, and every time this intense, like, music starts <laughs> kicking in, he's just, he's just under the impression that everyone's going to break into song. Okay, so... First of all, once again, because the acting was so bad, it felt like a musical. Bag on bag on musicals. I like some, I hate most. And my point being is that the whole idea with musicals is that when a character feels such an intense rush of emotion, the only thing they can do to express it is go to song. And the character would be like, "What do you mean, all of our cheer? All of our cheers have been stolen." And then you're just like. And they just go into dialogue, and you're like, wait, you're not gonna. And they just go into a normal dialogue. But Actually, there's still this baseline. At there's the bottom. this baseline because I think they're trying, like at the time, they were trying to show how like intense of a moment this is. They're like, oh also, my god, music, like this is such a big deal. The music sometimes did not match up with the tone or the feel. Like sometimes it was like such hardcore, early late '90s, early 2000s, like punk rock that you were like, they're just going, they're just driving. Yeah, which I I think I can understand with this movie, though, because, again, like, in this movie, you're tackling this concept that, like, cheerleading is a very intense thing in general. Mm -hmm. So I think the music matched in this instance because, like, they're all taking, like, even Missy, uh, played by the el beloved Eliza Dushku. Okay, I, I had a 24-year-old sexual awakening with the introduction of her character. She, imme she immediately came on screen and I was like why is that my type not, not that she had the dreads and the chain wallet and whatnot you do you you know what but it was um I don't want to say like when she was cheerleader fied but it was like when you got to see more sides to her the first impression I was like I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a fan of Missy but then when you got to know her oh no the second I saw the introduction of Missy when I first watched this movie I was like I'm in love. Well, I thought she was going to be a lesbian character. Everyone <laughs> assumes that because she was so hardcore. Well, she could have still been because she doesn't have any sort of, like, romance B plot. See, but that's what I like, though. I like the, the introduction ambiguity. of this character, and, like, there was no need to force, like, a romance with her. Like, no. she was introduced as a badass. There was no she, time. Uh, and I liked, though, that what they did with her character was to play in a concept of peer pressure because peer pressure is such a huge thing even like today they like played it a little bit but then she just becomes friends with everyone and gets along with everything and there's also like these it, the movie felt like it was going in a hundred different places at once it, and, it was because let's be honest when you first watch this movie did you think it was going to be about torrance or did you think it was going to be about like missy well, you think it's going to be about Missy because, like I said, it's going to—it's like a pitch—it's like a pitch perfect plot. It's a pitch pitch perfect plot. It's a PPP, and and no, it like focuses on Torrance, which like I'm glad that she got to have like a little character arc where it was like she was a ditzy popular cheerleader, and then she's still a ditzy popular cheerleader, but she comes into her own and she meets she gets with the guy she just met recently. And I guess they don't really talk about how much time passes, but it's not, it's certainly it's not a lot of time. Yeah, um, I think the one thing that they could have done better at, again, though, just for the sake of the time that this movie was made in, it was kind of a bummer to watch this movie, especially at like 25, mm -hmm. and <laughs> see how they started what seemed like a, a bunch of different plots, and, and then they just kind of fizzled out. Well... It's extremely weird that they inter they talk about her one friend, and they're like, "Are you gay?" And he's like, "I'll never tell." Yeah, it's and like, and then and then they don't do anything with him, and then at the end he introduces himself to a guy, and you're like, "Oh, he's he's gay. He is." See, and then he's like, and then the movie ends because it's at the end of the movie. And what I find so fascinating about that was at a time like that, it seemed so important to have these, like, these defined things uh -huh. that were sent out into these movies and these TV shows. Yeah. Like, it was important to sit there and have, like, an iconic LGBT role being shown on television because, for example, mm -hmm. like me, again, Buffy the Vampire Slayer was, like, one of the only shows you had that representation on, and then look how it ended. Um, so you didn't really see that. And what I find so interesting about this is they bring it up. And it sucks because he was like a supporting role. Like he wasn't 
the protagonist. But in essence, I kind of liked how they did it because they didn't put labels on him. And I think that's an important thing now, especially with people today, is now that we're... Like, we still have an uphill battle. LGBT rights still has a huge uphill battle. But I think I appreciate the fact where it's like you did not have to define anything. You're like, hey, sometimes I swing this way. Sometimes I swing that way. That's a good but point. But it's like, this is how I feel. And at least instead of just pushing that down, they were able to kind of bring that to the forefront and say, hey, like, who I like shouldn't matter. Yeah. No, I like I this mean, and I like that. That was a cool thing. I just wish they had developed his character more. I think it, And it, it, that's the one thing I'm definitely always going to dislike is when they introduce these characters and it's like that five seconds of like, oh my God, someone I can connect with. And it sucks that there's a lot of people who are like, oh my God, finally, finally someone I can connect with. And then they brush that character well, off and then you don't. The confusing thing is that Torrance is introduced as she gets along well enough with her fellow female cheerleaders. Yeah. But she has like this very comforting like very cool fun friend moment with him as they're like walking and they're talking about like chemistry yeah. class and you get to know him a little bit more and that he seems like a very reliable cool friend yeah same thing when they go to pick up missy for the party they the, no the football game the football game yes yeah. for the football game I'm, I'm happy that they you know got to have fun with with like the, the missy Torrance relationship but i would have rather seen him be a someone that she came to for the more, like, intense moments, and instead of, like, I understand that they also wanted to do the B-plot romance, which I got right. I got so much of this movie right. He, it's so funny, because listening to him sit there and try and describe what he thinks this movie about was was great, because he pretty much was spot on, although, like I said, during the whole movie, he just kept thinking at some point, everyone was going to break out in a song. I really did. It, it was, it was, Isn't it it's, sad that we live in a society today where you could sit there and watch a show and you're just like waiting for the moment that they're going to have like some musical number? It drives me absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, Well, it's just people People don't want to talk about their feelings. They can only sing about them. They can and only it's, sing about them apparently. We need to communicate more in our relationship. Can we sing about it? I really don't want to talk. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If I watch one more TV show and every fourth episode is a musical number, I mm -hmm. think I'm going to lose it. But yeah, I was real pissed about that guy getting away with a sexual assault. Yes. Um, I was real pissed that the friend of Torrance didn't get more elaboration besides, he might be gay. I was upset that they, they I, I said that they were going to do it, but I didn't think they were going to do it so blatantly that Torrance was going to have a B-plot romance with a person that moves into the school as a new student. It's this... And, and although there were some really iconic lines. Yeah. In the film. Um, Is that your B? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the most iconic line of that whole film cheerleaders are just dancers who have gone retarded. And I, when he said that, when. What was it? What's his name? Like Mr. First of all, Mr. Sparky? Or Sparky? It's Sparky um, Palastri. First of all, I hated the fact that the term retarded was is like even acceptable. But I, I think I like that line because of the fact where it's like cheerleaders, I don't know, when I've grown up, cheerleaders were always the people you wanted to be around, you wanted to associate yourself with. Like sure, if you yeah, weren't a were, cheerleader. They were, they were they were popular, they were the in crowd. Yeah, and I remember the dancers in my school like Cheerleaders were always more popular than dancers. Like, I didn't even realize we had a dance team. Yeah, the da I mean, every school, like, every school that I knew had a dance team, but they were always seen as, like, a little bit of, like, a social outcast next to the cheer. The cheerleaders were, like, the movement-based popular side, whereas the dance team was not as popular. Yeah. I think the reason why I thought that that line was iconic, in a sense, is because of the fact that, in all reality, dancers are genuinely all about the actual performance instead of you said that, that yeah you talked about how the dancers are all performance and cheerleader is all like it's the show it's a big show you're putting on a show and cheerleaders can move their arms in a circular fashion and everyone would be like oh my god and amazing. dance teams don't cheer they don't they don't no. use any like vocal although it was interesting because the school i went to 
And we were rival schools. Mm -hmm. But, like, the dance team from my school, they actually showed up to a lot of football games. Oh, yeah. Our high schools were rival schools. Yes. Uh, For people who don't know, uh, Ryan and I, we did not meet until college. Mm -hmm. But we grew up in the same area. Essentially, yes. Essentially. So his school is a rival school of mine. Mm -hmm. Although we both... Lost all of our games to Edwardsville. Uh, no, I was Collinsville. You were Collinsville. That's what Collinsville, I'm saying. Collinsville, good old we, Collinsville High School. Yeah, but none they of us shithole. could beat Edwardsville. Nobody could beat Edwardsville. It's because they had the money. Uh, when you have the money, you can do anything. You can train your students. Yes. <laughs> um, our football team sucked too. Which is funny because I love the fact that like the football team was completely irrelevant. You know, this movie did scream such levels of high school flashbacks in some ways. Yes. But it was such, it was so much more of a cheerleading movie than a high school movie, and I appreciated that. Because I didn't need to see a bunch of high school stuff. There was, like, one class room scene, and, like, one... There wasn't even, like, a scene where they were at a party. It was very yeah. much cheerleader-focused, so I appreciated that. Yeah. So I didn't get bogged down with a bunch of stuff. Which is funny that you did not see one party scene in this whole movie. And I appreciated it because mm-hmm. I love 10 Things about I, I Hate About You, but that party scene sometimes fills me with so much existential cringe. Yeah. Uh, you do get the iconic, however, when you find out that the boyfriend has been cheating on you. Oh my god, I was so... I got. I and got then the, you end up getting together with the guy that you had the crush on during the whole film, but you've not acted on it because you have a boyfriend, although she was doing him dirty by not um, mentioning her boyfriend at all. Not once. Yeah, no, everyone, there was so many of the characters were like, I mean, you, you, you watch a movie and you feel like if you just said, if you just talked to each other and explained yourself entirely, but... She, I, you could tell that she was unhappy in her relationship, but it was a status symbol and it was something she was comfortable with. And then she meets this new guy and it's exciting and new and fun. And she doesn't want to ruin this feeling, this spark. Yeah. But she doesn't want to say she has a boyfriend because that immediately will send him away. But also, also, it is a testament to the 2000s and also the toxic mindset that if I tell him I have a boyfriend, He's going to want to stop associating with me because the only reason I, I'm thinking that he wants to hang out with me or spend time with me is because he wants to date me. Do you think that's what was going through her head? That, like, at some I point, think that was you, going you through her head okay. at that point. Because think about it. She could have at the very beginning been like, I've got a boyfriend, but if, but I'd love, but think about it, but I'd love to still be friends. And, and that, and especially this year, I bet the friend zone mindset would, would have been so pushed Further? Yeah, see, I feel like the vibe that I got with that was that her and her boyfriend were kind of like a status symbol. Mm-hmm. It's oh, one yeah. of those things High where school. like, High yeah, where it, a lot of times. it's like you don't know if they were actually in love with each other or if it was just a thing of like, oh, like I have the hottest boyfriend, like it's mm-hmm. a status symbol. Because if you notice, and it's probably just a, either the acting choice that was made or just like the way it was written. But it was, like, the second that her boyfriend went off to college, like, she was bummed about it for a minute. She was like, oh, my God, like, you're not going to stay to see who's going to be announced. And, like, other than the two scenes where she's, like, trying to get a hold of him, which the only time she's trying to get a hold of him was for, like, matters of, like, when she found out that the routines have been stolen. And and she's like trying to like, 7 in the morning. Yes. She called this man at 7 in the morning. I fell for Missy so hard. Who, who does a loud phone call on a landline um, at yeah, 7 in the morning? Yeah, so for people, if you don't remember, uh, Torrance ended up sleeping over at Missy's house after the football game they that they went to. They just have an impromptu sleepover? They have an impromptu sleepover. And I guess at, like, 7 in the morning, Torrance was wide awake picks up Missy's phone, which I think it's so funny that they have multiple landlines. Yeah, in the a home. landline in, the, in her room. Yeah. That I would have Because I remembered, I remember growing up, it was one phone. One, one phone. phone that we kept in the kitchen. And if you were lucky, there was one in another room. But. Yes. And then you all had to sit there and take turns, because I remember my mom used to go crazy if I had, like, four-hour conversations with, like, my friends from school. Because my mom's like, stop talking. Oh, I don't, I don't know that. Well, that sounds, that sounds cool. Girls gossip. Yeah. Even in, like, sixth grade. Oh, that's neat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I, I was like, I got new Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> oh, my God, right. 
I was like, hey man, I got no Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> I still have my I still have my Pokemon and my Yu-Gi-Oh collection. Exactly. No, I mean, I'm I'm working on getting one of some of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards framed. <laughs> nice. I have a a nice blue eyes white dragon. The status symbol all its own. <laughs> yes, truly. And I almost had all the cards to uh, Exodus. Can you believe neither of us are not virgins? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Not to get too blue on the podcast, but uh, sometimes it's it's hard to to really acknowledge it. It's, it's hard to really know why my girlfriend chooses to stick by my side. No you matter. knew some of the women that I I oh, dated, yeah. and you were and everyone very rude. For people who don't know, <laughs> so a little backstory, a little side story you, you away thought, from the movie. You thought these two get along so well. How do they know each other? So it was probably my third year into college, and Ryan had just transferred in. Mm-hmm. And I have this best friend, Talia, my heart and soul. And She's a wonderful person. Yes. we. It was her, Ryan, and myself who were all in this movement class. And when Ryan transferred, all of the women were like, oh, my God, who's this guy? He's a transfer. Got to get to know him. <laughs> everybody, everybody flocked to Ryan. It's just because I was. It's just because I was fresh. And I, I, if I had been there, if I had been there from the beginning, it would have been. It wouldn't have. Been. Honestly, it probably would have been. It was probably because you were new. I'm gonna be honest with you. You were like a piece of candy. You were like a piece of yeah, candy. I was, I, I was just. I was just new. Cause like, all the guys I thought were when I when I got into when I got into, into college um, at SIUE, I thought everyone was very nice and I thought everyone was a good soul so like but like any theater if, if anyone had transferred to my last my previous school they would have been like like that person is now the new it's just because I was it's just because I was a new face you were a new face and I I'm gonna be honest with you I don't know if anybody else maybe you guys could who who's ever has a theater background could dive in further but I felt like our theater department was very clicky so when someone new came in, it was like, oh my god, if he's cool, let's suck him in. Uh, and if he's good. F- figure out figure out which click he goes to. Yeah, so Ryan transferred in. We're all in this class. All the girls are like, la 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 la, got to get to know Ryan. I'm gay, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think I'm still hanging out? <laughs> yeah, um, and our best friend, well, my best friend, Talia, starts talking to Ryan. And you... The relationship blossoms. Yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> like, no, okay. that, that's how it happens. It, it yeah. blossoms essentially. Yeah. No, I I was just honestly I haven't had a I had I haven't had better game. My game has officially like declined year by year since that, and I think that was the year because I had gotten out of a terrible situation from my last school. Yeah. So I literally walked in going, I don't care about anything. I'm gonna talk about board games and Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, um, and everybody should know I hated Ryan at first because then <laughs> when, when, Talia, when Talia and Ryan started dating, Talia naturally spends all of her time with Ryan, and it pissed me off because I was like, who is this person intruding on my relationship with my best friend? And so I, I hated Ryan with passion, but then I actually did finally get to know Ryan like more than like more than my friend's boyfriend, which... A lot of people only give some people a Yeah, vote. and I ended up getting to know Ryan so well that in his and Talia's first year of being in a relationship, we all moved into an apartment together. Talk no. about... Yeah, in, into our second year, because we were going to be... Was it, was it your second year? Because I thought it was we, your first year. We were finishing up, we were, we, were, we were rounding out our second year. So, yeah, so we all moved into an apartment together, and alas. That's when the relationship ended. Uh, it, you're either making it or you're breaking it, and it was a sure of a what breaking. Is, what does Batman say? You either you either die, you either die single or live long enough to have to be in a lease with your ex girlfriend <laughs> and and her best friend. Yes. Uh, so I was really like the child of divorced parents because I loved both of them, mm-hmm. and I grew to love Ryan. We came here to talk about Bring It On. The protagonist is a is Kristen Dunst, who I was like yeah, Mary so- Jane Watson. <laughs> Was in this film. Yeah, so anyways. I'm totally, um, I'm totally what was really tired. nice, though, I think, getting a chance to hang out with Ryan 
when we lived together because the only interaction that I ever had with you genuinely was like when you and Talia were spending time together and then I would always just like hang out with both of you. Mm -hmm. So what I appreciated when we all finally moved in together was how much you and I had in common. Yeah. And we could talk about 20 million other things and I think what we were on like attempt number six of trying to have you get me into Dungeons and Dragons which still, which you can tell I'm not efficient at this game or know anything about this game because I'm calling it Dungeons and Dragons, not D&D. Right, but, but you're just using the full name. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not, not. Your Majesty or the Queen. <laughs> so, teach me how to play Dungeons, Dungeons and, and Dragons. Dragons. You mean D&D? Yes. yes. Dungeons and Dragons. That is the acronym, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm well aware. Um, we'll get to it but, someday. I think what's amazing is that we always talked about, so we'd like talk about our plans and stuff. And in college, we talked about like our one year, our five year, our 10 year plans. And after everything, after our year of being in an apartment together mm -hmm. and how things sadly ended, oh it was, well. It was a wild time. It was a wild year. Ryan made his big move up to Chicago. He said, I'm going to do it. And he did it. And it was really admirable because it's like you talk about all these things you want to do and you see a lot of people who are like, oh, in three years, I hope to be here in four years and so on and so on. And Ryan did the thing. He made the big move. He made it up here. You've been up here for a year and a half before I was able to make it up here? Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, right. so it's it's amazing to reconnect. It sucked because I made my move up during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But talk about lonely but anyways but you've got a girlfriend yes i have a girlfriend still single <laughs> who's really winning <laughs> yeah who's really winning honestly uh, but don't you're about to move in with her that's really exciting yes uh, so i am excited because hopefully as of april that is the plan right now we came here to talk about bring it on <laughs> we came here to talk about bring it on but, but now we're going to talk about our personal if, lives if you if you've got a, if you've got something to get off your chest i'm happy to i hear. yes and thank you for the compliments i i truly appreciate and thank that. you to anybody who's still sticking around and listening to the story for everybody who doesn't know, Becca and I are taking our big step and she and I are, we're getting our place together mm -hmm. and she's moving up here from Tennessee to Chicago and I couldn't mm -hmm. be more excited. I am actually getting very impatient. Oh yeah, no, I would, I would imagine so. Yes. May so, your life in an apartment with a partner be fruitful and full of love. <laughs> it should be. Although sometimes she does talk about how she wants to decorate things and I'm like, yeah, is there ever that kind of issue where it's like the decorative energy doesn't... No, so the thing that I actually love, if anybody who's really into astrology, like I am, Tauruses, which I am a Taurus, oh. are known for being pretty lazy. <laughs> and so I have that kind of energy that just kind of genuinely like go with the flow. It's like, eh. I mean, if you took a look at my apartment now... It's got a bunch of boxes in the corner because I'm in the middle of moving, and uh, my bedroom just has like a bunch of pride flags along it with like books oh, yeah? stacked in a corner and three ukuleles. Oh yeah. So yeah. wait, three ukuleles. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep upgrading. Okay. We just keep buying more. So what I really love about Becca, interior design was actually uh, something that she's very passionate about, and like her apartment setup is like phenomenal. Like her design is like the epitome of what every lesbian hopes for mm. in their space we love to see it we love yes to see it. honestly i i gotta i gotta take a personal pride because you're someone that lives with that used to live with me is that i take so much more pride in my personal style and my sense of living than I did when we lived together. Yeah. And I'm very proud of the apartment that I currently He used to leave so many plates in the sink. I left so many plates in the sink, never cleaned anything, to the point that you two tweeted about me. <laughs> <laughs> you tweeted mean things about me, and I found them, and I confronted you about for it. Piece, for people who also don't know, I, to be honest with you, I'm pretty blunt. And yeah, no, it's like, one of the things, it's one of the reasons why I still talk to you. Like, yeah, it's like, I have no problem, like, if I ever tweet or, like, make a video or whatever, I have no problem saying what I say and whatever to your face. Yeah. yeah I'm very, I'm not kidding, I'm very go with the flow. Mm -hmm. No, and, and that's one of the things I appreciate you about you, but it's also, it was a wake-up call, and now... I think, didn't I show you that tweet, or did you come across it? I came across it, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, you didn't come, you didn't, you weren't upfront about anything, you were petty as hell. Yeah, but then, I think I remember when you brought it up, I was just like, oh yeah. Yeah, no, but no, I, I mean, I deserved it, 
we all were kind of depressed and living in very bad... Also, there was black mold in that apartment. Yeah, so we lived in an apartment building. We were in the sub-level of the apartment building, and our landlord never took care of anything. And what the, the most horrific moment, I think, in that entire year... Was when I uprooted my bed? Is when he moved his bed, because he... You were getting ready to move out, weren't you? I was, and then yeah, you was lifted your bed up. We had to clear out the rooms. Yeah. And there had been this like dank, not good dank smell yes. that smelled like under a bridge. Yeah. And we lifted up this bed frame, and there was just black carpet. Like, uh, let me. Ref- so it was a light brown carpet, but it was like black mold level, like grime. Because the water damage from the rain, like the pipes, the piping, had like gone through all of the carpeting of the apartment and yeah. had like created like this just stained like stuff that I had been sleeping on for months because I got the bed. Yeah, well, and Talia also got the shit end too. Yes, because Every, well, everyone got the shit end of that. Yeah, apartment. because she was also currently crashing on the couch in the living room and there was also oh, her poor back. Room. Yeah, her poor, poor back. She, she's doing good now, though. No, she's doing good now. Um, but yeah, before. so there is your backstory on Ryan and I and how we know each other. Whether yeah. you care or not. Whether you care or not. I wanted to tell it because I thought it was important. So the one thing also was the um, the whole thing with the Compton school and that whole yes. thing with the routines being stolen from them. At first, I was really worried because it was the year 2000. I was like, was there, were these going to be a lot of really offensive stereotypes and caricatures? Yes. Once again, I might not be a good basis for it but I didn't feel that too heavily so yeah what was nice you brought it up too because you were like you wanted the Clovers to win yes they needed to win they, they deserved- needed to win and they deserved the win but you had also talked about your fear of this movie pandering yeah to if they won and feeding into some kind of yeah the, the, the main idea I had was like I didn't want their I didn't want it to well I'm glad they did I'm glad they they portrayed it as like they didn't accept the money from Torrance to go up there. Yeah. So I think that was a really helpful thing. Because had they accepted the money, it would have been like this, yeah, we were shit to you, but we're like this white savior kind of thing for Exactly. You guys. And what I remember telling you too is that in the very beginning, pretty much, you find out that the Toros have been stealing the routines from the Clovers. Because mm-hmm. Tauruses are really late. Tauruses. Tauruses. Or very late. I'm not even going to dive into that. Anyways, so what I like about this is when you're watching the movie and you find out, it's kind of like the repercussions. Like, it's genuine repercussions. Because when they go to regionals, after the Toros had hired their choreographer to help them out, and you find out that he's basically a piece of shit, you see the repercussions of that because it looks like they stole someone else's routine because after one cheerleading group gets done, they go next, and they literally do the exact same routine. Oh, it's so painful. It's so painful. There were so many moments, Rachel, where I was was in physical pain. I could not get through the stress and the awkwardness of them deciding to go through the routine. And And it's painful, but what I love the most about that, especially that moment, is that you see that they didn't come up, like half these stupid movies, they find out that their routine's been stolen or something happens and they got to quickly come up with a new routine and it seems like in 16 minutes, in 16 magical minutes, they come up with some brand new routine that gets them first place. Yeah, I thought that's what they were going to do. So it you you watch and you think it's going to happen, but this was like so a I genuinely... they did that in Pitch Perfect. They did something... Yeah, they did something like that in Pitch Perfect. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, no, you're fine. But so I liked the repercussion of that and seeing them being so defeated they got lucky enough to be able to move forward and to nationals and what i liked about watching with the clovers is when you put in the work good things happen the clovers could have sat there and they could have gone with the routine that was stolen from them and they could have not advanced they put in the work they did a new routine one that blew the audience away they got to move forward then they hit the next obstacle. The next obstacle was not having money. Because they're not from some super fancy I was like, so fascinated school. with their 
journey more than the main characters. And what sucked about that, and I think the one thing I hate about this movie is the fact that there's all these like many plots that are happening, but they just disregard them throughout the movie and they come back to this one character, Torrance, which in my opinion there's no growth with her. No, it's more You started and she's been the same character the whole time. There's no growth other than the fact that she recognizes and understands that what happened is wrong and she's like, Well, as like the captain of the cheerleading team, like, we need to do something else. Well there's also that there's also that one scene with her mom at the beginning where they're like where she's like, You've gotta do something with your life other than cheer. And she's like, Cheer's my whole life. Yeah. And she's like, Well what if I take this chemistry class? And you're like that chemistry class is what sparks the conversation with said boy that leads to said romance down the way. Yeah. But we don't extrapolate on that because it's a cheerleading movie. But it's very much like a scene that didn't need to happen if yeah. the movie was still going to just be Torrance being about her cheerleading ex- journey and like still being so heavily in like cheer is my life. Yeah. And then also, I mean, finding out that cheer is her life was all, you know. And fake. I mean, what. What teenager hasn't gone through something like that in their life where they've been like, this one thing, this is my one thing that I'm good at, this is the one thing I'm sticking with, this is the one thing that's supposed to push me. You want to fit in. I mean, to be honest with you, sports, unless you're lucky enough to make it professionally, once you're done with it in college, what are you going to do? I mean, you could say the same thing about acting. I could say the same thing about acting. Like, that's true. And... The thing that I loved about that mom was the fact where it's like cheerleading cannot be your whole life. You have it this moment. It's something that keeps you preoccupied. It's what you're passionate about now. But like, at least you have, a, at least you had a parent in this film who's like, you need to do something more. Yeah, like, but take it, just, more classes. it just felt weird if, that, if like the pace of the movie was going to be this wacky cheerleading film, but there was going to be this moment where it's like, but remember, cheer can't be the only thing that matters. Like, if yes. we had saw something later on where. Maybe no, Cliff. and the way the movie ended was just so awkward. Yeah, it was like Missy's... Well, first of all, Missy and her brother, who was the guy romance to Torrance, has one of the... Well, first of all, one of the best on-screen sibling relationships I would say I've seen in a bit, where it felt very natural, like it felt very much like the teasing, but I love you kind of thing. But then occasionally, it would feel like... I first I was like, are they, are they dating? And then I'm like, no, they're brother and yeah, sister. Yeah, because you, they're... at one point, you were like, they have this, this vibe. like, vibe that they're a couple. But at multiple points during the movie, it's established that they're brother and sister. And it's funny because at the very end of the movie, when they find out that they're in second place, the brother goes up to congratulate everybody, and he does, like, some awkward side hug with Missy. And if Missy had turned her head at, like, the wrong way, they would have full-on made out. And it's just, it is weird because, like you said before, like very, they were very similar in age, so they could have been twins, but they weren't, well, we don't know. It, I, I thought like they could have been twins with the way they were like. And I remember when I was watching this movie grow, uh, growing up, I had always assumed that the brother was older, mm-hmm. and Missy was the younger sister. Mm-hmm. And then they kept having vibes where it was like, they were really like twins, and yeah. it wasn't older brother, younger sister. And so... For the longest time, I had no idea what their mm-hmm. age difference was or what it was supposed to be. But, oh, I also want to touch on Jazz Fingers, man, once again. Uh, the, Spirit the folk, Fingers. The, the Spirit Fingers, not Jazz Fingers. Oh, uh, I, need a, I need to express this because this PSA. And feel free to just open ham palm smack me if I say something that is, is crass. The way that man belittled the woman with a great ass upset me to no end when you said that i could understand that i hate the fact that they had no problem dissing on anybody's body type i think that sucks i'm glad that we're starting to get past that and being more accepting of people and not belittling anybody's body so in the film there's this character darcy Great ass. Great ass. Phenomenal ass. I think the ass that... But they made they made not one, but two jokes about how she has too big of an ass. Yeah, they said she had too big of an ass and she needs to make it small. Not smaller. possible. But let's be honest, if we're talking about asses, like, that ass was prime. Prime. Thick thighs, thick legs. Yes. And it was real upsetting the way this man attacked her. He was like, you're, he's like, you're flawless in every way, but your ass is too big. And I was like, excuse me, sir, I'm watching this in 2021. She would be worshipped. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
And the fact that he tells everybody that they need to go on diets. It doesn't matter who you are. Also very bad. Male, female, whatever. He's like, you all need to go on diets. Also very bad. Yeah. Um, let's let's get rid of that. Train of thought? Yes. That... The, the two... Uh, yeah, well, let's get rid of that. I thought you were saying let's get off the ass talk. No, no, no. no. I'm <laughs> saying it's like, let's get off the that, that train of... Everybody needs to diet. Everybody needs to diet and everybody's body is wrong. Mm-hmm. Your body is your body. You work on your body how you want. You get your body the way that you want. Everybody else can screw off. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're healthy, like if everything is working well and you feel good, who cares? Taco, <laughs> taco me to the movies. Speaking of which, everybody who voted on the poll that I put on Twitter, again, I just want to reiterate, thank you so much for voting. It did not matter. It truly did not matter that Taco Me to the Movies won by a landslide. Because it was a great title. It was a great title. Uh, but look out, because we could still make shirts about that. We'll just put Taco Classic Movies in small font. Yeah, Taco Classic Movies will, will stay the title most likely, but I think... Taco me to the movies will be a fun catchphrase that I think we can throw in. Maybe one day, like I said, I really would think it'd be fun to do taco me to the movie shirts. We should. We should do taco to me to the movie shirts. Mm-hmm. And then have the TCM logo like on the back or something. I like that. Yeah. Oh, another thing. The two mean girls. The two mean girls that were like mean throughout. Oh, she's yeah. like, hey, stop being mean. And then they're like... What, guys, we gotta win these nationals. And then it was just <laughs> over. They just like they're like they're like we were mean and now we're not mean anymore. Yeah, I think the most growth that came out of that whole like any character were the two mean girls. It was Whitney and I can't think of the other girls. The movie the movie felt rushed once again. It felt like we need we need to have this plot point, but we don't have time. We got internationals. What's so what's funny about that is bring it on. There are four sequels. Four movies. Four movies. Four movies. And essentially, they're just sequels upon sequels. Well, they're not sequels because they're all different movies, right? They're, so there's sequels, spiritual, like, are yeah, they all sequels. In, are they all in, like, the same school? Is that No. Oh, so it's um, not even that. It's, it's just the same, cheerleading it's, films. Yes, it's the same concept. It's like they, they wanted to keep the same atmosphere, but they wanted to ditch all previous characters and start new. Mm-hmm. So you just have like Bring It On, Bring It On Again, which Bring It On Again, which should be the sequel to Bring It On, is it, not related whatsoever. It's like Grease 2. Yes, Grease 2. It had nothing to do with Grease 1. Because they graduated. Yes. I think if you are if you liked Bring It On, you should check out Fired Up. Fired Up is a really good movie. That's also a cheerleading movie. Well, maybe someday it can be on Taco Classic Movies. It will Hopefully be. Hopefully not... Right after the Bring It On episode. <laughs> we come back with my next pick. Fire it up, everybody. Yeah, we gotta go with it. No. I was like, we're gonna be very specific. So do you like cheerleading films and taco places? Well, I've got just a podcast for you. <laughs> exactly. Whoa. Speaking of podcasts, thank you everybody for uh, tuning in and listening to our thoughts. This was a really fun movie. I was really... this. It, I had a really good time with this one. And I, got, and I had a lot of thoughts about it. And... Yay yeah, nay. thank you. No, that is a yay for me for bringing. How many on. stars? I think just a four. Okay, so you're generous. I say yay, but it's a three out of five for me. Yeah, I would say a four because watching Kirsten Dunst be angry and intense on screen for what the two hours is a mm-hmm. lot. Yeah, no, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, the film, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Everything that was good about it, but the, the that's where the that's where the one is lost is for all the stuff that we talk about now maybe it's not right to just only take one off and not two and go down to the three place but i i had a good time all the same with it so yeah it's a four okay for me. good well thank you everybody for listening thank you make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want to get more of this we are going to be doing we're, we're going we're, we're keeping up with we're going to try to keep up with regular episodes every week yep and so we will see you next week. Yeah, follow us on all the socials. Is there anything that you want to plug, Rachel? Uh, I don't know. Okay, look out though because uh, the series, the Fortnite that I'm in, we're gonna yeah, start really, filming soon. Really awesome show. Had a great first season. It did. It had a great first season. There's a convention coming up that's still on as of right now in June. So if you've not gotten your tickets to the convention, it's out in Los Angeles. Please. Out in the Los, Ange- Los Angeles area. Yes. Please get your tickets today because I want to meet everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, no. 
No, so you plug your socials. You all the fun, fun selfies. Or you don't Everyone want, you don't knows my socials. Oh, well, you can follow me at Ryan Eagleman on Instagram. And I don't have a Twitter, and I don't get on my Facebook too often. So just that, just that Instagram. And yeah, thank you so much. And have a great night on you ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary badasses. <laughs>